back. What a day already. This is just getting a, a little overwhelming with all these new features, by the way. Welcome to our Adobe Live First Takes, Adobe so Max First Takes, actually. You're going to be talking a little bit more about Fresco. But before that, I just wanted to show you the schedule again so we don't lose track of all the sessions that are happening. Um, if you're interested in something very specific, they are going to be available on replay afterwards, so you'll be able to catch up. I know there was a lot of excitement about Illustrator just now. So we have Melanie now with us for illustration on Fresco. Tim will then be there for video and motion. And we'll wrap up with Adobe Express with Patricia Reiners. We do have a Q&A with uh, Tony Harmer to finish this off. Uh, it will be live on Behance, and he will be joining us from Max in LA. What a cool setup. It is, it is. <laughs> and I'm a little, you know, I'm a little excited. I know the expectations are really high about Fresco now after this yeah. Illustrator stream. True. Can't get any better. True. And you're here with the iPad. I love it. Already set up. You've had a few espressos, Melanie, and we're ready to go. <laughs> I had such a strong espresso. <laughs> Joe was our barista. Uh, Joe, who's, who, whom you've seen before yeah. with photography, he put the most extreme coffee for me. We have an all-round talented team here at Adobe. Um, so, what are you going to show us today? What are you excited about, Melanie, in the <laughs> illustration world? <laughs> How much time do you have? Um, I'm very excited because uh, this year is, or uh, the upcoming years are so much about exploration, experimentation. We've seen there's so much going on with yeah. um, generative art. Um, everything is going into a very tech-driven direction. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see all the things that are coming um, to Fresco, but also Illustrator, Photoshop, and all the other tools. Um, I think it's just the beginning. I think we might have to expect a bit of a change for the illustration community. Yeah. But uh, that's the hey. good part, uh, because yeah. um, we always love to learn new things and love to discover and explore. And um, I think Fresco is the best way to start, because um, it's very easy to get into a good flow Agreed. and to create lovely artworks. Um, so Fresco is definitely the way to go yeah. if you're starting out, but also if you're a professional um, illustrator already. Um, infinite tools. Yeah. And we have about 25 minutes today to show as much as we can, which is not a lot. We'll so try I will, and make it. <laughs> I, will, I will stop talking. Um, for all the people who are new to this, Fresco is an illustration tool. Um, and the cool thing about it is you can pretty much mix all kinds of brushes you can think of. Um, that's basically my favorite feature in general, and especially that you can mix um, pixel brushes, yep. vector brushes, and live brushes. And uh, that's one of the things we're going to have a look at once I quickly explain the interface, because yep. um, what you see here on the left side is pretty much all the tools you have available. So tons of brushes, of course, all the other things you know from Illustrator, a couple of other things, not all, of course. <laughs> it's, all a, of it's a tinier <laughs> version of uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, but um, the most important features are there, of course. Um, on the left side, you have your tool toolbox more or less much. Um, and on the right side, there's everything um, related to editing the things you have created. Um, we have a couple of effects here. We have uh, blend modes there. So you create on one side and pretty much edit on the other. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple of other tiny things to discover in Fresco, um, which we're going to have a look at next. But let's start with the brushes. Um, the cool thing about Fresco is, as mentioned, you can pretty much blend all kinds of brushes you can think of. Um, and actually, let's start with, which ones do we start? Mm. Mm, let's start with the vector ones, and I will choose a fancy color. Um, fancy colors. <laughs> yes, of course, it has to be purple. And do ask questions for Melanie in the chat. I didn't even mention this, but we are tracking the chat on the Max website, if you just joined. Um, saying hi to a couple of people while you get ready. Um, we have Mark who's saying hi, Laura and Bobby, Veronica, Darko, welcome. Um, everyone's really excited about illustration, so love to see this community still alive. That's good to hear, of course it is. Um, so what you see here are pretty much the vector brushes. Uh, vector is something we usually know from Illustrator. Yeah. Um, it's path and shape paste, so that's how you create your artworks. You could um, pretty much bring this into Illustrator in a very easy way. Um, you have the option here to open a copy in Illustrator and could just move it there within a second. Um, there are tons of different brushes available. Vector means infinite scaling, so if you're interested in doing huge artworks that are um, yeah, really scaled up to a huge, um, I don't know, what kind could it be? Um, mural, for example, yeah. um, then this would be the way to go. Um, do, you have different versions there, basic ones, of course, but also the ones that are a bit more um, manga-inspired, for example, mm -hmm. and they're really cool. 
Um, I love them, but I'm really into textures and yeah. have a bit of grain into the shapes. So um, I love the pixel brushes, yeah. but, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let's have a look at the mm. live brushes first, because this is a really cool thing in Fresco. Um, the brush is pretty much, wait, let me, I will apply it quickly. Um, as you can see here, you apply them and they grow. It's like watercolors or oil colors. And um, you can add a bit of water to that and it really fades out and really blends nicely um, in each other. You see, the colors are live, which means they are editable. editable. Um, you can add water, it's watercolor based, so it really works like on paper. Um, the other option would be oil brushes. So I look at those two because they are actually my favorite. And I will show an artwork later on. I hope everyone made heard made the whisper. <laughs> <laughs> I will show an artwork later on that was made with oil brushes, as you can see here. So it's really, really thick paint. Um, it's just the way you would apply it, but you don't have dirty hands. You don't have to worry about uh, the paper and whatsoever. Um, so it's really, really nice. Um, you also have a bit of texture in there. Um, so it's super cool to use those oil brushes, um, but I will show an example later on. They all blend really nicely into each other and you can of course stop the blending so you have all kinds of uh, options there for the tools. Yep. But I would recommend to watch uh, Carl T. Webster's uh, classes about the brushes because um, he goes into detail and I don't have time for that because I want to show so much more. So uh, please enough. watch those <laughs> streams um, on the hands to go into detail with the live brushes. Um, so I will delete this one because I don't really like the color combination. Um, now going to the pixel brushes. Yeah, we actually I have a question about pixel brushes. I have to spot it in the chat from Lancy, who's asking, sorry if I missed this, but can you change the pixel of each brush? Some answers in there already from the chat. Robin says, yes, see the un under the color on the left. <laughs> Nancy's saying, thank you. <laughs> Melanie's having a little peek. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go to yeah. the pixel brushes. So. Um, I will open my library of pixel brushes because Fresco comes with a couple of brushes, but you can add more, um, which you can see at the very bottom here. It's add brushes. You go to the website, click one more button, and you're pretty much done. Um, you see all my collection here. I pretty much have all the winter, spring, summer brushes, watercolor brushes. So I edit everything because I love going through it and discovering new brushes. Um, but let's have a look at the, what do we what do we try? Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's have a look at the dry media brush, maybe soft chalk. You see, the pixel brushes are really nice and they are really, really close to real chalk brushes. Um, in general, the whole feeling on the iPad is super cool with the pencil. Um, I love it, it's one of my favorites, but I also like drawing on the Vacom. So I'm a bit yeah. undecided, yeah. but whenever I'm with Fresco, I'm able to draw on the go. Um, I can yeah. take this with me. I can note down um, all kinds of ideas and if I have the time, I can also go into detail. So that's the cool thing about it. Um, so look at the, we had a look at the chalk brushes, but one of the very new features this um, at this max are the new pencil brushes because one of the best brushes for me is the pencil brush, and I'm really excited to have I think about seven more now. And I don't know if you know, but Fresco is a super new tool. It's actually just three years old. Yeah, we're celebrating this, Max, right? We love a little bit of a birthday, like a little birthday celebration. And someone was asking in the chat if I would love to hear your opinion on this, the comparison between Photoshop and Fresco for digital painting. And as you said, Fresco is quite new. So what did that bring to you for the digital painting experience? Um, it's a really hard question because both options are absolutely valid. Yeah. And yeah. I think um, once you start compositing all the um, parts you have, I would definitely move to Photoshop yeah. because that's my tool for compositing. Um, for painting, I love this feeling on the iPad, you know, yeah. it's so lightweight and I can do it wherever I am, yeah. it's on the go, it's mobile, um, and I love how the brushes feel. Yeah. So I think there's no better or worse about this, but both are really cool. Yeah. And the combination makes the whole thing really exciting. And we have great illustrators in the chat also jo joining. Raquel Costa is telling us, yes, in her opinion, she much prefers the iPad version um, of Fresco instead of using Photoshop, for example, on the iPad. So yeah, have a, a little bit of a play around. Definitely. Um, yeah, Raquel is doing great work. So yeah. if, if <laughs> I would definitely agree with her. Um, let's have a look at the 
brushes, um, at the new pencil brushes, because they are, as I mentioned, very new and really cool because you can do all kinds of different styles with them. You find them here on the sketching, um, and those are pretty much the very first ones here. I already had a look at them and drew some of them on a piece of paper. Um, and you can see the really nice variation here. Mm -hmm. As always, the brush defines your style. So yeah. go through it, give it a try, and just figure out which one suits you best. The first one, for example, I can picture really nicely for one of those vintage uh, retro styles from the 50s, maybe, yeah. where you just have outlines with a bit of color in it. Um, and the softer ones are perfect for really sketching and making a base um, outline of where you want to go and later on really draw the thicker and heavier lines. Um, Robin is asking now that you're here on, the, on these pencils. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you constantly. This is great. <laughs> but um, I thought this would be an interesting one for you. Um, he's really excited uh, that you can digitally simulate smudging pencil or charcoal or shading. Yes, which absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Um, let's have a look at some examples because what I showed now is pretty much the basics. You can do that yourself. Go through the, through the pencils, brushes and whatsoever. Give it a try. But let's have a look at some examples what Fresco can do. Um, this is one of the illustrations I did recently and they are beautiful. They are. Yeah. I love it. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> and they are made. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, guys. We're leaving. Yeah. Going. <laughs> it was just a pat on the back. <laughs> it's one of those moments where you're surprised by your own skill. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, oh, this turned out really, really nice. Um, but this is made with the oil brushes. If we can, if we zoom in a bit closer, this is made with oil brushes mm. and the smudging tool. Um, so really, really, really smooth experience. And it's almost meditative, you know, yeah. you're in the flow, you do this and it feels so real. And then yeah. you add a bit of texture with a bit of grain and then you're done and it's so nice. Um, but this is one of my favorite examples of oil brushes plus smudging, plus we're going to have a look at later on as a liquify, uh, which is pretty much a cleaner version of the smudging. But uh, we have a couple more minutes to go, so I will keep that for later. Let's have a look at another example because I mentioned it. Um, this would be one for the watercolor brushes. Um, a very simple example, I know there are other people who do great watercolor brush artworks, um, but this is what I'd use it for. It's really doing sketches, highlight some colors, and that's it. That's my, that's my watercolor, that's where my watercolor version ends. Um, <laughs> I really like uh, thick colors, mm. textures, so the water brushes are sometimes a bit too smooth for me, but maybe this is something I have to learn too. So, another example for the vector brushes. This is one of the, uh, the fun <laughs> examples I wanted to show. And this is actually the one um, that defines pretty much my style the, the most, or yeah. this is what I like, the, like about Fresco the most. Um, it's vectors plus textures, so it's a mix of the pixel and the vector brushes. Um, I think this is the most exciting for me because I like clean shapes. Yeah. But, you know, it's still tangible and yeah. it feels almost like you can really touch it. Um, Combined with good printing. You're an expert in this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so the lovely Melanie actually designed uh, some cards here. It's, it is a postcard. Um, that was the ultimate it is, yeah, yes. purpose. We had a lot of people excited about grainy texture just now with you, yeah. So it's great to see you again. Um, and yeah. Definitely. Um, I think Fresco is just a very loose way of doing textures and doing some yep. grainy um, shadings. Because if you do it in Illustrator, you would use, you know, it's based on shapes, so yeah. it's not as um, artistic as it is here. Yeah. In Fresco, you can go crazy, and that's what I love about it. But um, something I prepared for, day because, for today, because we have to go through some more features. Yes. It's nice to look at my past artworks, but there's more. <laughs> so we'll do another hour of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exhibition. <laughs> I would love to. I know, I would next, also love next that. Year, I will, I will uh, add that to my wish list. Um, so we had a look at the interface, we had a look at the pencil brushes, um, let's have a look at some other cool things we can do and which were just added recently. So Fresco is one of the apps that are updated regularly. Um, if you use Fresco, make sure to join the community because there are always updates. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a really, really nice conversation going on about how to do things and um, Adobe Live does a really great job in, in adding um, illustrators, so there's always something to learn. Um, but let's have a look at some more artworks. What I prepared for today is, of course, something uh, related to Adobe Max. So 
Let's add that here and let's hide the brushes. Um, I have the, the logo here, which I already, um, to which I already added some gradients. Um, and what I'd like to do is um, pretty much add a bit of a, a fluid uh, environment around it, a bit of a uh, nice background to make it pop out. Um, where do we start actually? Let's start with the colors. So what I would usually do is I would collect some inspiration for colors. I would have a color palette that I use regularly and I would go and use this one. Um, if I do something for Max, for example, I would use one of the um, brand artworks and pick the colors. It was always a bit tedious to do that and you would have to go one by one and um, sort the colors. Yeah. But what you can do now, what actually, um, which is really nice, what Fresco does for you, as soon as you add a photo, it picks the colors for you already. Um, so that's one of the very, very nice uh, workflow things that are a lot more, um, a lot quicker right now. Yeah. Um, so Fresco would pick the colors for me already. I could just choose them. So no more um, weird color picking, and I would use that for the for the background. Let's go a little crazy because that's what <laughs> I love Fresco for. Um, I prepared this one here. It's just a selection of colors I like, mm -hmm. and we will do a really nice gradient with that. What we're going to use is this match tool, and um, it's something you can find here on the left side. As with the brushes, you have a huge selection of options you can select from. Um, and let's go for maybe the basic one here and just the soft one. Because I know um, gradients are one thing people are looking for often in fresco yeah. um, and it's really nice to do that with the smudging. So what I would do is I would just blend those colors together and go crazy about it. Um, <laughs> it's one of the things I like the most in fresco is uh, those little surprises. Um, I feel now that maybe some color is missing here. I would add that maybe in, maybe a bit of um, purple as I mentioned before. Blend this in again and we would at some point have a really nice background. Um, I just have something that's a bit more liquid, so we do that here. Yeah. I'm missing a bit of red, I will add that back in. Um, and it's really easy to create those gradients. I know people who are used to do this in Illustrator would do it in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. You know, once yeah. you have the tool that you really love, go to the tool. Um, my tool is Fresco and that's how I create the, the gradients there. Um, so, we had a, a look at the smudge tool. As mentioned, you have tons of options to edit that. You can, of course, um, define again the hard hardness, the, the smudging, the spacing, the angle and everything around that. You can define how smooth you'd like to do this, so infinite options. All of those options are available in for the brushes too. Yeah. So, once you, had a, 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 you found yourself a, <laughs> a couple of favorites, which I have not shown yet, but let's have a quick look at that. You can, of course, save favorite brushes here. Once you did that, um, go into the details, define your brushes yourself, um, look which ones uh, suit you best and how you can edit them. Because editing the brushes makes them a bit more unique. And, um, and a few of Kyle's brushes in there, I've spotted. <laughs> most of them, yes. Yeah. But what I love to do is really edit them and yeah. turn them into my own style. Um, because well, the brush defines the style you have, so. And Robin is asking, uh, I'm gonna bring a few questions from the chat. Robin, uh, she, <laughs> sorry about that. Are, are layers generated automatically or manually? Um, it depends. Yeah. Some of them are, so whenever you switch to brushes, they are created or generated automatically. But it can, of course, happen that you paint on one layer. Um, but once you switch to brushes, pixel to vector, for example, it would create a new one. Um, so yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's but the a full answer. <laughs> yeah, that's the full but it's the um, longer answer. I have this liquid background out now, so let's bring in a bit of maybe something like confetti. Um, and celebration. <laughs> this is the fresco celebration <laughs> <Yeah>. coming in. <laughs> the birthday. Um, and we're going to use the multicolor tool for yep. that. Um, I mentioned the color picker and how to get colors from photos, um, but there's another option how to get color into fresco. Um, I created this little pattern here. Let me quickly um, hide the background so you can see it a little better. It's just dots. 
Um, and what I'd like to do is, I will add a bit of this blue here. Um, as you can see on the right side, this is a vector layer. So it's a circle circle, it's a vector layer, and the other one with the grid is a pixel layer. I will add it here and I will use the pixel brush for that. Oh, that actually the vector brush. And just create this grid. Um, doesn't look like much, but what you can do, and what's really cool is you can use the multicolor picker and select the dots and create a brush out of it. It's one of my absolute favorites and it turns every lettering immediately into a great artwork. Um, so everyone who hasn't tried yet should definitely go there. Um, you can of course scale the brush and you pick multiple colors. If you're coming from a vector brush like me and you think this does not work, it does, <laughs> but you have to select a different brush. Um, you have to select the pixel brush. And once you have that, you can create nice. an artwork with your pixel brush. And if you think this is nice, it's just the beginning. <laughs> um, because the most important thing is to really pick one of the um, basic brushes and define them and add them the way or edit them the way you need them. So let's go back to the basics. Let's go for the this one. And we have a lot of confetti here now. Adding the background back in adding this one and we can see that this is really nice that looks awesome. um, I used the variable brush which means uh, it changes the shape so the harder I push the thicker the whole thingy gets um, but we can edit that and you have a bit of a pre preview here you can define the hardness so it would be mm -hmm. like really um, fade out you can define the spacing which is really cool if you want to do something like confetti Brand modes, of course, shape dynamics, uh, which is really cool. It's how crazy your confetti goes. Um, and I don't want this to be um, controlled by the pen tilt, but pen pressure. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, spacing is a bit smaller. And I will actually, I just noticed, I will switch back to the pen tilt. Yes, because it changes the, the shapes, which is really nice. Let's delete this one, let's create a new one, and let's bring those in. We add them on top. And we had someone in the chat asking this a little earlier, um, asking about f animation features in Fresco. And this just makes me think of animation immediately, <laughs> like just all the things that you it, could be doing. Um, Paul was asking, you know, are there any options to create GIFs or animated PNGs? Um, there are actually two ways. You can create a frame-by-frame -frame animation, yeah. and you can create a path animation. Um, I, we might not have time for this, by the way, so it's just a yes or no answer probably. Oh, no. <laughs> we have two minutes, Melody. <laughs> we, can't, we can't stop now. We can't stop now. <laughs> okay, let me, let me quickly show that path. No, we start with the frame-by-frame -frame animation. Frame-by-frame -frame animation means you really draw every single frame, which means we would start here. Um, there's something like an onion skin, which means you would see the previous and multiple previous steps if you'd like to. So we would have this one here. I create a new layer. I create another new layer and another one and another one. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be really fast, but um, it's a bit of a, an example of how this could work. I think that answers Paul's question immediately. Yes, <laughs> you can go and play around. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can export that as a GIF, of course. Um, or a video. Um, another option is you can have a really nice time lapse of your illustration. But um, GIF would be the way to go here. Um, the cool thing about this is we see that this moves now uh, very fast. We can edit the, the speed of mm -hmm. it. We can edit the frames. And uh, another option is you can combine um, frame by frame animations with path animations, which means uh, you could draw a really crazy path. Now this might be too much of a crazy path. Let's do this. And fast. Let's stop it. So it's time, Melanie. We have a minute. No, <laughs> Just less than a minute. Um, I've shared your Behance on the chat, so if you do upload anything on there, I'm sure everyone will be keen to see that. Yes, and there are a couple of really great um, animation examples there. So definitely have a look at the uh, Behance profile, uh, because 
it was actually an, an Adobe Live collaboration. You know, so the Olympics. Plenty it's such a more. good example. Um, plenty more on there. We do have to wrap up, Melanie. I'm so sorry about that. No. Um, <laughs> we have very disciplined guests today who just want to stick around. <laughs> um, there'll be another session right after this with Tim, who's going into video updates. We're also swapping hosts, so we'll have the lovely Tanya, who's going to join you all. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just five minutes. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>